Annie, genuinely, one of the things that I love most about you is that you're uh, really generous with your knowledge, which I think is a really beautiful thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, the whole aim is sort of to share, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And if you're not going to, like, perpetuate your knowledge, you know, what you really do, you take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, my curry is actually very close to done. Oh, wow, it looks beautiful. Yeah. And really, the last touch is... Um, some fresh little bird's eye chilies, and then a little bit more coconut cream. Okay, cool. I can't wait to dip that bread in. I know, I can't wait for you to taste it. I can't wait to taste your chicken as well. Ragony, why have you got going here? It looks a bit British. <laughs> British. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's part of our, uh, you know, history. It is. <laughs> yeah, so I'm actually making this mystery dessert. Yeah. I want one of the components is going to be a rhubarb and ginger chutney. Yeah. So anyway, just pop the rhubarb in and just a little drop of water just to get it sort of started, not too much. Yeah. Bit of sugar and ginger because, you know, we want it to be nice and gingery. And that's about it. So just give it a stir and the rest have it on medium heat and it'll take care of itself. I'm very intrigued. Okay, so I've got some milk. You know, we've been cooking it with a bit of vanilla bean. We just even put the bean itself apart from the seeds. Just yep. going to add a little bit of butter in there. Just it's a going to bit. melt. <laughs> yep. And just, just going to beat eggs. some eggs. Yeah, just beat them up. Add some sugar. And just whisk it together. But just making sure that the hot milk won't curdle the egg. Just going to add the hot milk with the vanilla infused in that and the butter and that's the butter. melted, but better to strain it because you've got the bean in there as well. Yeah. And we just whisk that again. Some people get a little worried, you know, when we sort of have hot milk in there, the eggs, but it's mixed with the sugar, so it's not it's going to... It can't stabilise it, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's not going to be a scrambled egg or anything, yeah. hopefully. Well, I can't wait to show you this roti, right? And I have revisited the roti many times, but um, on going back to Malaysia, I've actually learnt a really brilliant recipe, and I've realised that this is the trick. It's not actually in the skill of throwing. You can see the dough is really supple and really stretchy already. And the home version is very easy. So you want to just kind of tease the dough. It's really, really elastic -y. What makes it different? Do you know what I think it is? I think it's the amount of um, condensed milk. This condensed milk in there? Yeah. Wow. I think that's the sugar is what makes it stretchy. Mm. There's all these different methods of folding it, but the way Chef Matt taught me was just that. Just go in the middle and then sort of... Oh, and then you should actually dob a little bit of... Margarine, and that will keep it sort of like separate when it cooks. And then he did this thing where he'd lift the pastry up in the middle like this, and then he'd fold it out like that. Ah, so you turn it into a round. Yeah, and then you get all these little pockets of air which then go really crisp. <laughs> Do you want to try one? Oh, well. <laughs> it's really fun. I think I've made this a little bit soft, which goes to prove that it's a fail-safe recipe because it's still working really well. People think that roti is Indian, but it isn't actually. We've oh, got... sorry. sorry. <laughs> I just slapped you. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to do this the proper way. Yeah, you kind of have to be shown the hand positions because there's a bit of crossing over and you're basically stretching and throwing and it's a bit like tossing a pizza. I'm taking the easy way out. I'm not going to yeah, toss. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm I just stretching. It, it's just as effective. <laughs> You have to try this at home because it is so much fun and they are very, very yummy. OK, I've got a fat, stodgy one. <laughs> <laughs> Little, fat and stodgy. So I'm going to use another bread, naan. Ah! Get some naan from your local. You can get it the night before, it doesn't really matter. Yep. Leftover naan's good for this recipe. Leftover naan? I don't think there's ever leftover naan, is there? <laughs> Maybe buy a couple more then. <laughs> yeah, so it's a little twist on the old bread and butter pudding. But we're doing a naan and butter pudding. That's fantastic. I love it. That's a pure fusion. And it goes with the rhubarb and ginger chutney we put on before. You can see that's sort of reduced now, so it's really nice. Yeah, really interesting looking. OK, so I'm cutting up this naan into smaller pieces. You can use either a pudding dish or, or ramekins we can ramekins. Or and remember that custard we made just now? Mm -hmm. It just goes in there. I'm just going to let that soak because that just makes the bread nice and soft. So about 40 minutes of soaking. Bake it in the moderate oven, 180 degrees for about 25, 30 minutes. Yep. Um, yeah, and that's 
It's ready. Fantastic. Well, I'm mm. going to cook my roti. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. So my pan's on and it's just a bit of oil there. My roti is only going to take like a couple minutes. Oh, well, I better go carve the chicken then. Oh, I can't wait. Now, this chicken has been resting for about 15, 20 minutes now. You see all the nice juices that have yeah. just sort of formed this instant gravy, gravy without, um, you know, having to do much about it at all. Okay, so I just take the leg apart now. Beautiful and succulent yeah. and juicy. Very nice. This is just like butter, you know, it's just slicing so beautifully. And see the egg the that egg. you loved over there? <laughs> <laughs> Do people fight over the eggs? Yes, I think so, especially in my family. Yeah. Okay, so now the best part of the dish, which is really giving flavour to everything, is the stuffing. stuffing. So that's going to come out as well. And just put a bit of the juices on top, and yeah, we're ready. Well, my roti is ready, so I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to smash it the traditional way. Make it all nice and fluffy and serve it. And it's going to go perfectly wow. with the curry. So, so you're let's... going to have that bowl and I'm going to have the pot? <laughs> <laughs> if you've never made a curry, you've got to try it because it truly is like conjuring magic. Because all these like complex spices and things that you just don't know how they sort of, you know, come together and then suddenly it's like magic. It is, absolutely. Would you like to try some with some oh, roti? Would I not like to try some? <laughs> <laughs> Dig in, you go first. Okay, wow, that's lovely. Mm. I've got all the different flavours. It's just fantastic. And I never knew it was so simple, actually, in the sense that I really thought there'd be a lot more ingredients going in there. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting that you said that Nonya cooking really intimidates you, because I watch you do Indian cooking, and I just wouldn't even know where to start. It's crazy that you could cook that from memory, that dish. Oh, that's why we have recipes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm dying to try your chicken. Yeah, why not? Come on. I'm going to have some of this thigh bit, because that's my favourite part. <laughs> it's a really intriguing dish. If you put it in front of me and I tasted it and I knew nothing about its background, I just, I don't think I would have pinpointed it as Indian, but just really beautiful dish. We're actually eating Cleopatra <laughs> <laughs> that we bathed in yogurt. <laughs> it's beautiful. We've got one more thing to test, dessert. And here they are. And I decided to do some little individual ah, ones. Beautiful. We're just going to pop some of that rhubarb and ginger chutney. You want some icing sugar? Oh, that looks so good. Oh. Have you got a new favourite recipe? <laughs> Delicious! Oh, that's gorgeous. I just absolutely love this whole dish. I love the custard, I love the naan, and that rhubarb and ginger is really inspired. I just love it. You're a lady of good taste. <laughs> Well, if any of you find spices really mysterious and intimidating, all I can really suggest is just to cook a couple of curries because that's a really good way of getting acquainted with sort of how spices behave together and what sort of flavours they conjure up. There's no mystery to it, is there really? Not really. It's been fantastic to have you again here, Agony. Thank you for bringing Cleopatra. <laughs> I'm sure Cleopatra would have been privileged to be at the tail of two chickens. <laughs> <laughs>